Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at the surprisingly recent invention of the t shirt. Just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Mac Weldon, the most comfortable daily essential clothes that you'll ever wear. And well, this video is all about t-shirts, so Mac Weldon sent me one to wear. It's super comfortable, made of premium fabrics, and it's a smart design. And you can get 20% off at MacWeldon.com by using the promo code BRAINFOOD, one word. The t-shirt is arguably the most popular outer garment in the entire world. Coming in a range of styles, colors, and sizes, there is quite literally a t-shirt for everyone. But where did this iconic garment come from, and how did it become so popular? Relatively speaking, the t-shirt is a fairly new addition to our collective wardrobes, and it has only been an acceptable piece of clothing in its own right for around half a century. While the garment itself has existed in a recognizable form, albeit with wider necks and shorter sleeves, since the early 20th century, it was almost universally considered to be underwear, and it was rarely, if ever, worn in public. So where did the t-shirt come from? Well, it's thought that it evolved from a kind of all-in-one underwear made from red flannel known as the union suit, which was popular with workers in the 19th century. The union suit was patented in 1868 in New York and was based on a similar kind of underwear that had been popular with Victorian women. While the union suit excelled at keeping men warm, it was all but useless at keeping them cool in hot weather, unless, that is, half of it was cut off. This is something that many workers did. In doing so, they inadvertently created the top half of what many would recognize today as long johns, a similar garment which consisted of two pieces of long underwear. Although long johns themselves have existed since the 17th century, where they were similarly popular with workers and the poor, they were most popular during the Victorian era, along with union suits, where they were advertised to women as a way to keep their waists trim via having to wear fewer layers around the waist while still keeping them warm. Unlike union suits, which have since become the literal butt of many a comedy gag, thanks to the fact that they often feature a built-in flap on the butt, long johns have never really waned in popularity since and have been keeping people warm right up in until the modern day. Sometime in the 19th century, the people making these type of toasty undergarments began experimenting with fabrics that could stretch back into shape and make the product more comfortable. This resulted in the creation of buttonless undershirts made from wool and cotton that you could pull over your head without ruining the collar. Though the exact date these so-called pullovers were invented, by whom and when workers began wearing them isn't known, we do know that they absolutely weren't considered something you could wear in your day-to-day -day life without something over the top of them. There were even laws on the books as early as 1890 in places like Havana stating that it was illegal to wear these pullover tops exposed in public. The fate of what would become the t-shirt began to change in 1904 when the Cooper Underwear Company began marketing them to single men as bachelor undershirts with a tagline that simply read, no safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread. The advertisement played up to the fact that the undershirt, as it was then known, consisted of a single piece of fabric that had no buttons, meaning it would be more durable than its buttoned counterpart, which meant less maintenance. So, well, why is this important to the history of the t-shirt? Well, that's because very shortly after the advertisement ran, the US Navy, who employed many a young bachelor with limited sewing skills, officially incorporated the buttonless white undershirt into its uniform. According to the 1905 Uniform Regulations of the United States Navy, the cotton undershirt was exactly that, a shirt that had to be worn underneath the rest of the sailor's uniform. That's not to say there weren't exceptions, though. According to the regulations, sailors were allowed to wear a light cotton undershirt of identical pattern in warm weather at the discretion of their commanding officer, whilst sailors working the engine room were allowed to fashion themselves a makeshift undershirt to make themselves more comfortable if they so desired. The undershirt came to the attention of the U.S. Army a few years later during World War I, with the undershirt soon worn by tens of thousands of Army soldiers, many of whom took the fashion home with them. Shortly after World War I ended in 1920, the author F. Scott Fitzgerald became the first known person to use the word t-shirt in print when he included it in his novel This Side of Paradise as one of the items that the main character takes with him to university. And in fact, a very slight tweak on the design of early t-shirts came about at university, the invention of the crew neck tee. These were made in 1932 by Jockey International Inc. at the bequest of the University of South California, who wanted a lightweight, absorbent garment its football players could wear underneath their jerseys to prevent their pads from rubbing and chafing. The resulting style t-shirt was a huge hit with the team, and it wasn't long before students began popularly wearing them. 
By the time World War II started, the modern t-shirt had become commonplace in high schools and universities across the states, though it wasn't yet ubiquitous and was still commonly worn by adults at least as an undershirt. There were many exceptions, of course, particularly among laborers in hot environments such as farmers. The final push for mainstream acceptance of the t-shirt as an outer garment started at the end of World War II when soldiers returning home began incorporating them into their casual wardrobe, much in the same way that they'd done during the war. The popularity of a t-shirt as an outer garment further surged thanks to Marlon Brando and his role as Stanley Kowalski in a streetcar named Desire, which featured Brando wearing a tight fitting, as most were at this point, bicep caressing t-shirt. Brando's smoldering performance in both the play and 1951 movie caused a nationwide spike in sales of t-shirts, proving to the world that the t-shirt could be a sexy, standalone outerwear garment. It didn't take that long after for businesses to realize the marketing potential of these mostly blank outer garments, with the likes of Roy Rogers and Walt Disney, among many others, soon using them for this purpose, popularizing the now ubiquitous practice of putting designs on t-shirts. And, well, the rest, as they say, is history. So just before we get into the bonus facts for today's episode, let me tell you a bit about Mack Weldon, the makers of this t-shirt. Now, t-shirts have come a long way, as you learned about in this video, and now, in the present day, you should definitely be getting them from Mack Weldon. Now, they don't just make amazing t-shirts like this one, and I should note here that I've worn this a few times now. Now, normally I am wearing t-shirts under my shirts, and this is the first one that really manages to stay tucked in. I've always found that a bit of a trouble, but this one, totally tucked in all the time. Pretty amazing. But they also make underwear, socks, hoodies, and sweatpants, or as I would call them, being from the UK, tracksuit bottoms. So, Mack Weldon, they make premium men's essentials, and they believe in smart design and premium fabrics. They also have a super easy shopping experience online, so getting the clothes, very, very easy. And Mack Weldon are so confident that you will love their stuff that if you don't like something, you get your money back, no questions asked. And not only does it look great, but it also performs well, whether you're working out or just working, or just, you know, general everyday life stuff. So, Mack Weldon, simply making better stuff. Don't deny yourself this level of comfort. And you can get 20% off using our promo code BRAINFOOD, one word, at MacWeldon.com, and you'll find a link in the description below. So, thank you to Mack Weldon for sponsoring, and let's get into today's bonus facts. As we've mentioned before, Marlon Brando is also credited with popularizing jeans in the 1950s with his role in The Wild One. And now for another bonus fact. No one is really quite sure where the term long johns comes from. The most popular theory is that the term stems from either a 17th century boxer named John Sullivan, who boxed in underpants not dissimilar from modern long johns, or a famous knife fighter known as Long John, who supposedly fought in his underwear for reasons that aren't quite as clear. Of course, it could also have nothing to do with any John simply referencing the fact that they are worn by Johns, as in a generic term for a man, like any Tom, Dick, or Harry. And now for another bonus fact. Contrary to popular belief, there's no proof that Clark Gable's topless appearance in the movie It Happened One Night in 1934 caused a drop in sales of undershirts, as is often stated. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do subscribe because we put out brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, once again, thank you to Mack Weldon for the sponsorship and thank you for watching.